Hey everyone, this is David from Sheets Finance. In this video, we're going to go through accessing historical financial statements. The Sheets Finance extension allows you to pull over 30 years of consolidated annual and quarterly financial statements directly into Google Sheets. And at the time of this video, we have over 60,000 financial assets available globally. All of this is achieved with just a few simple functions. So let's get started. I normally like using Apple, but we'll mix it up and we'll work with Microsoft. So I'll type in the ticker code into cell B1 at the top here. For this example, I'm going to use the function generator to write our functions for us. But of course, we can type them in manually if we know them. I'm going to highlight cell A2 because that's where I'm going to generate the data. And I'm going to head over here to the right hand side where I'm going to start typing out my function. Now, the stock code is located in cell B1. So I'm going to type that in here at the top. I'm then going to go to real time and historical. And within this, I'm going to head down to the income statement. This is probably a good time to point out that this little question mark here will take you to the docs for any of the types that you're working with in Sheets Finance. So if you click this, it'll specifically take you to the income statement information in the docs. I'm now going to select all because I want to uh, return all the line items of the income statement. I'm going to select a year. So let's just say 2022. And then I'm going to click generate. And we'll see on the left hand side that the 2022 income statement for Microsoft has now been populated. You know, let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see the line items. Down the bottom, you'll notice that there's a direct link to the SEC filing. So for all US based stocks, you can then click that link to take you directly to where the data has been sourced from. All right, taking it to the next step. We can also, of course, change the year quite quickly. So if I keep that cell highlighted because that's the area that I want to then update or the function I want to update, I'll head back here. And let's just say instead of the 2022 annual statement, I want to get the trailing 12 months or the sum of um, the last four quarters. So I'll generate this. And this time around, you can see the period has now changed to TTM. And these figures are the trailing 12 month figures for Microsoft. Now, sometimes you want to compare year on year. So another um, feature that historical financials have uh, is that you can enter multiple years. So I'm going to remove TTM. I'm going to now do the last 10 years, let's just say. So 2012 to 2022 like this. And you'll see all the while, and we've spoken about this in previous videos, the function is being built for you. And it's a relatively simple function. So you may not need to use the function generator if you start to get, to, get used to how these things are built. So I'll click generate again. And this time around, we now have year on year from 2012 to 2022 in an instant Microsoft's income statement. So that is annual statements. Um, one last important point to focus on is that we can also get the latest annual statement by removing all the rest of the arguments. So if we don't put in the year, what we're going to be returned with is the latest annual data that's available, which is the 2023 financial statement. Um, and of course, we can filter down using the subtype to a specific line item we're after. So for instance, we could say revenue. And once you filter down to one specific line item, you're not going to get any headers. You will just get that figure. Um, another aspect of this is that you can have one line item, but then you could still have multiple years. So now we've got 10 years of revenue side by side, and we could use that to plot against other companies. The last argument that often isn't included is the options argument. You can either do it manually here, or I could do it down here on the right hand side of the function generator. There are two options uh, for the historical financials. One is NH for no header, and one is NLI for no line items. So in this case, because there's a header, which is the dates, I can remove that with NH, and I could remove the line item, which says revenue, NLI. So if I chain those together with the AND operator and put it in the options argument and click enter, we're now only going to get the figures for revenue for those years, which can be really handy when you're trying to put together some sort of dashboard and you don't want these pesky headers or line items popping up and annoying you. So moving on to quarterlies, and maybe we'll change to the balance sheet to do that. 
Um, you can see here we've got balance sheet and we've got cash flow, but the same logic applies for all of them. So for the balance sheet, again, we're going to display all the line items that are in that balance sheet, but we're going to change the report to Q1 and we're going to take uh, the first quarter of 2023, for instance, and click generate. Now you'll see the main difference here is that Q1 has been appended to this second argument, historical financials balance, um, but the rest of the function is exactly the same. And you can again do multiple years. So I could then spe specify the last 10 years again, or well, let's go even further than that, the last 20 years and click generate. Now the important point with quarterlies is if you specify Q1, what you're gonna see in front of you when you do multiple quarterlies is only quarter one each year. So quarter one, 2022, quarter one, 2023, and so on. If I want all the quarterlies between those two years, I just need to remove the quarterly number. So if I remove the one and leave the Q in and click enter, we're now gonna get four quarterlies for each year for the last 20 years. So this should be, what, about 80 columns of data or so. And often we want to get just the latest quarterly. So the same logic applies as annual statements. If we remove the year entirely and we click enter, then we're just going to get the latest quarterly data. Oops. Let me remove that. So you can see here that the latest data that Sheets Finance has as of the time of this video for Microsoft is Q4 2023. Um, quarterly balance sheet. So that's it for quarterlies. You can see there's a variety of ways of displaying them. You can, again, similar to annual statements, you can remove the header, you can remove the line items. Uh, it allows you to plot things side by side. And of course, all of this is relative to the actual stock code that we're using. So if we were to, again, do, you know, third quarters between the last 10 years like this, and we display the data, we could then say, okay, well, let's change that to Apple. And you can see in an instant, we're swapping between quarterly statements of multiple stocks. And you can see how quickly you can start to build out a dynamic dashboard for your research, uh, your investing research. One last feature that exists in Sheets Finance is what we call TTM reports. So if I head back here and I do historical financials, income for instance, and I then add the suffix TTM as part of the type there. I then say all because I want to display all and I pick a certain date in history. Let's just say the first, the first 2021. What this function does is it reports the last four quarters immediately preceding that date. So it's a snapshot in time. So as you can see here, from the 1st of January 2021, the immediate four quarters prior to that were these quarters. And that allows you to quickly get a trailing 12 month snapshot of a certain period in time. And some users like to use this to specify, for instance, the revenue, TTM revenue from that point in history. And again, if you wanna then sum that, you could remove the line item and you could wrap the whole thing in a sum. And now this figure here is effectively the TTM revenue from the perspective of the 1st of January, 2021. Now I know I got a little bit deep there towards the end, but as you can see, there's a lot of power to the historical financials and this is just scratching the surface. So jump into the docs and send me any emails or comment below if you have any questions. Thanks for listening.